Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 486. Today we're going to take a look at Battle Cruisers. This is a new game from Tasty Minstrel Games, and it says Eminent Domain Universe, so it has a loose tie to the Eminent Domain game. There's not really a tie, basically, it's in space. Each player is controlling one of these battle cruisers and you have an identical deck of cards so each player has I believe there's 33 cards that you start with and you're going to pare down to six seven or eight cards depending on how many players are playing out of that deck and each player is going to take the exact same cards out of their deck um, and so you've got this sort of interesting card play timing kind of thing that's going to happen as well as kind of creating a new metagame from game to game. So let me just jump into how it actually works and then I'll tell you what I think of it. Okay, here's everything that you can get in Battle Cruisers. Now each player is going to get a little sort of player card and you don't even really need this. Uh, but this has kind of a couple of areas. You've got a discard area, an in play area. And a recovery zone. Now, if you ever get down to your last card, you're about to be eliminated, and you're gonna flip this over to the red alert side. And basically, what that means is your in play and your recovery zone are now the same zone uh, to a degree. So, there are certain cards that will target your recovery zone, and basically, you can have cards discarded out of your recovery zone, but not your in play. When you're down to your last card in red alert mode, then you are open to having that card removed. So everybody's gonna get one of these. You're also gonna get one victory point to start the game. And there's a stack of victory points here. And then it's also the status marker of protected versus disabled. Now each player, as I said at the beginning, has a deck of 33 cards, and these are all the same for each player. Now depending on how you wanna play the game, you're gonna take a certain number of these out of the deck. So you'll take uh, six cards out for a three player game and then seven and eight cards out for the four and five player game. Now there are different setups similar to a game called Dominion if you've played that. <laughs> so you have these different setups. If you're doing the basic setup for your first game, and I would recommend doing this for your first game, you'll use these numbered cards depending on the player count here. And it has all these different setups that you can go and do. And it also has rules for constructing your own setup. I mean, you could just do six random cards. If you're playing a three player game, you could just say, oh, let's just do these six cards and then play with them. It does give you some suggestions. The only thing that really matters is that everybody's playing with the exact same cards. So let's get a hand of six of these. Let's just take some random ones to show you how the game works. And then what you're gonna do is shuffle these up and then you're gonna put one randomly down in the discard pile. Discards are always face down. And you'll put randomly one face up in the recovery zone. Now there's a variant rule where you actually get to choose and you'll simultaneously reveal and then everybody chooses a card to go in the recovery zone. I actually don't like that. <laughs> I actually like the randomness because it just gives you kind of almost like a little bit of asymmetry and I'll explain uh, that in a minute. So once you have some cards set aside and everybody's gonna go and choose one card from their hand, maybe you'll choose the navigator here and you'll put it face down in front of your in play area and then we're gonna reveal them and then the cards are going to trigger in this order. So the low number cards will go first, all the way up to the high number cards. Now when your card triggers, you're gonna do whatever it says here. So this is gain two points, and then choose one remaining main effect for yourself to ignore this round. And the main effect is whatever this effect is here. Uh, so this kind of acts as a shield. So somebody else may play something really nasty, like discard the card in your recovery zone, or discard a card from your hand or something. This will allow you to choose one of your opponent's cards to be protected from. Now you notice down here in the bottom right it says clash. In this case, there's no effect. Now if one or two, excuse me, two or more players play the same number card, you're gonna ignore this main effect. That's not gonna happen. You're gonna apply the clash effect. In this case, that's no effect. You could also have one here. Let's find one that actually has an effect. This one here. This one you actually will lose one victory point. So that means everybody who played the 15 loses a victory point. And so there's not <laughs> that many cards, as you can see, to sort of guess at. So, you know, in the three player game, there's six cards. In four and five, there's a couple of more. So what happens here is you have sort of a developing metagame. And the way that we've been playing it, we've been playing it for about two weeks now, uh, is you, we'll pick a setup and then we'll just play that for like an hour. We'll play it like three, four or five times. And depending on the setup, some setups do go a little bit longer than others just by the nature of the cards. 
Uh, now, the way that you win the game, which I should say, is the first player to get 15 points at the end of the round, so you collect your points here, uh, is going to be the winner. So in case there's a tie, then it's whoever has the most cards in hand and so on. Uh, and then the other way to do it is to eliminate all the other players. So as I said, once you get down to your last card, you're going to go into red alert mode. And what that's, that's only going to resolve uh, at the end of the round. As I said, cards in your in play are normally safe. So if I play this and it was my last card, then I won't be eliminated that round, but the next round I'm definitely open to that. And so as you sort of quote unquote take damage or different effects are applied to you, you're going to be discarding cards into your discard. There are cards that will allow you to sort of heal up and, re and recover these back into your hand. Uh, there are cards that allow you to take like the recovery zone card from another player, add it to your hand. Other cards allow you to, you know, cards will kind of change uh, ownership throughout the game. There's just a lot of different uh, effects in the game. Uh, some of the, like the spy drone's a cool one. This is the number one card, for example. You put this out and it says, swap spy drone with another card from your hand. That card will resolve in number order as normal. So this allows you to put this down. Everybody reveals face up. You have the spy drone. This is gonna trigger first, but now you can see what everybody else has played. You grab another card from your hand and then trigger that. So you can kind of, you know, tick and tack your strategy to whatever's been played. The number two card's really cool too, which is you gain two victory points, and then cards are resolved in the order you choose this round. Now you can see the clash on this is pretty hefty. You lose two points. So it, while some, depending on the setup, it's really cool to resolve cards in your order, or it can be very kind of tricky at the end of the game. You're like, oh, if you do this first, then I can take it from you or something. Uh, but again, you're running the risk of losing two points there. Now you'll see sometimes I'll have symbols here. These are just to refer to. These are kind of like types of cards too. So some of the cards will say, hey, if you have a card with this symbol in your recovery zone, then you get an extra point or something like that. Now these little sort of crossed out um, icons here, you can see on that one there, when it, you're building a new sort of setup that's not listed in the rules, it'll tell you, I think it says only two, put two of these in uh, in the deck because I think it, the game would go really long or get really crazy if you had like a whole bunch of these with these little uh, cross out symbols like so. Uh, but that's the game. You kind of pick a setup and then let me go ahead and go into the review because that's the part I really want to talk about in terms of you know what these different setups can mean. Okay, so that's Battle Cruisers. I did not expect, but this game is awesome. I thought it would be kind of a throwaway game. Now it is set in the eminent domain universe. So that's kind of why I was like, I'll take a look at this one. And you know, cause I really like eminent domain. And I was like, yeah, it just probably, you know, it's just some, some little light filler game. We're just kind of tacking on the license, so to speak. And not the case. <laughs> uh, really surprised at how much, how interesting this really is. So I talked a little bit about it in the kind of the rules walkthrough, but the trick of the game is playing some of the different setups. Now we have had some setups that are a little bit kind of like, eh, that wasn't so great, but we had more setups where that were like amazing. And we really wanted to just kind of keep playing it and keep playing it and keep playing it. And now we've gotten to the point where we started to like kind of tweak them a little bit. Like, Hey, I really like that. That two cards really funky. Let's try that. Or there's like this pirate raid card, which is awesome. Which is like, when you play the card, you have to discard it but then each, the other players give you cards. <laughs> so you can kind of like tank your hand a little bit and get some other cards from other players. Or there's another one that's sort of similar, which is Reckless Pilot, which you have to discard a card, but then you get four victory points. So you can kind of thread the needle and then you can, you know, kind of run a kind of lean hand and maybe try to, depending on the setup, you know, get other cards to get cards back out of your discard pile and stuff like that. But everybody has that same kind of small set of cards and it has this whole thing that I normally hate. <laughs> Honestly, I normally hate this kind of game where you're playing a card and we're just trying to guess and see if you played this card or I played, if we played the same card, that kind of thing. Uh, normally that kind of thing sort of annoys me. Uh, you know, it kind of is it's something that sort of Citadel's Libertalia kind of vibe that I, I just don't really like. But this one re really works for me because again, it's a small subset of cards and you can tweak that sort of metagame and the games are going to play very differently. We've had games where you, the, you know, with a lot of stealing cards where you can really grind up and get like, and you just get a, like an unbeatable combo and you win like really fast. Uh, 
and you just get that many victory points or you're just like blowing up the other players and you know making them discard and you just kind of get like a lock on the game but you've had to work and strategize to get that and you kind of rely on maybe other players fighting each other or clashing against each other like there's a card that says if other players clash you get some extra points so you can say like okay i bet they're gonna try to clash you know or somebody's gonna clash based on where they're at, they need to catch up on points, so they're trying to go back and you know flip the escape pod to get a point and then get some cards back out of their discard pile and back into their hand because they're running really low on cards or something. So there's that kind of, you know, that kind of guessing and metagaming that's gonna happen. But again, it's not so wide open and just kind of, it feels less random. Now you have the ability, so when you play the cards, they go to your recovery zone and the cards in the recovery zone go back into your hand. And that's pretty important. I should have mentioned that during the rules walkthrough, but I'm mentioning it now. Because once you play a card, you can't play it again on the next turn. You've got to kind of cycle through that. So if I know that you both played your spy bots, then your spy drone, then I can play it safely. And so there's that little bit of sort of gauging that's going to happen. Uh, or you can try to guess, or maybe you're playing a four player game and two people will play the, play the spy drone. And like me and you look at each other, we're like, are you going to play it? <laughs> You know, you kind of outguess each other. Uh, and then, of course, there's cards that will affect and, you know, take cards out of the recover zone. Um, so there's just a lot of options here for the game and a lot of kind of replay that's going to happen, especially as you've gone through. I'd say we've probably gone through not quite half, but a little bit more than a third of the different pre-made setups. But now we're kind of getting used to some of the different ones and some of the different natures of the game, you know, some are very aggressive and you know, the game's gonna be won by elimination and some are a little bit more drawn out or some are gonna allow you to do different combos and stuff and really set that up. Some of them have multiple combos and I don't remember which one it was, we played it last week and you know, it was like multiple different things you could combo with and get kind of a good engine going uh, in that case. But I definitely recommend this game highly, so take a look at it.